Pretty well, Kirby. Hi, um, it's hard. it's nice to speak to someone else from Camden today. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, do you know I don't understand? There are there are two things that are online that are well, I, there are many things that are online that are untrue, but that I am from Camden and my birthday and date of birth are untrue. But fun, you know, fine. I'm not. From, I'm North London though. Okay. Yes. Well, that's that's close. Cool. That's still good. It's good true. Enough. Close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I really enjoyed this show and I love your character. It's kind of hard to figure out initially what Ruby's kind of intentions are here. I just wonder what that was that part of the appeal when you kind of first read the script to not quite understanding her. Is that exciting for an actor to have this kind of slight sense of mystery attached to a role? It's very exciting as an actor to have a sense of mystery because what it is, is is discovery. And I think as an actor, you are constantly trying to discover things about your character. You're constantly discovering through your character things about yourself and what you can bring to that role. So to play a character that isn't completely laid out for you means that there is so much more work that you get to put in and it becomes much more of a collaboration. And talking of collaborations, of course, I know it's an ensemble piece with such a myriad of really complex, brilliant supporting roles. But of course, you've got the kind of stupidly charming Colin Farrell in the kind of leading part here. Can you just talk a little bit about that kind of collaboration process with an actor like that who sort of, he, he brings so much kind of mystery as well to his, to his role? Absolutely. I think that what's really exciting about working with an actor like Colin is I think if you are a fan of his you will know that Colin cannot be pigeonholed there is not one genre that you would associate Colin with you know he has done everything from the lobster to you know being in a Batman film it's like I think it's completely like you you when you look at an actor like that and you see their range of work then you know that the projects that they choose to be involved in are going to be exciting, are going to be new, are going to be something that people haven't seen before. I mean, I thought this project is so kind of ingrained in that kind of classic film noir of kind of golden era Hollywood, despite it feels very contemporary, but it has a real classic sort of touch to it. It feels very cool to watch. Did it feel cool to make with all the kind of dialogue attached to it and the kind of the kind of sort of sunbaked kind of L.A. kind of sort of um, sunsets and stuff like that? Was it, I just wondered if it felt like you were kind of stepping into something quite cool and something quite classic. Well, you read the scripts and you understand very much from the pilot, we understood that this, the idea of this would be like a, that this would be a neo-noir. It was a, something that drew heavily from past references, but would be done, like you say, in a very contemporary way. However, when you're making it, you sort of let go of all of those things. You let go of the genre, you let go of what it will eventually look like, and you're so much more in the moment and focusing on your role, your relationship with the other characters, the chemistry that you have. I will say filming in Los Angeles is, you can't help but understand this world so much more because you are filming in these really iconic places and, and you are, you're in the, 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 the birthplace of, of, of film, you know, we're in Hollywood. But having a director, particularly working with Fernanda Mireles and Cesar Charlone, they are not people who are from Los Angeles, like myself, like Colin. We aren't people, we're people that have lived here, though they haven't, but we're not from here. And I think what that does is, is that you see a place that you are very, very familiar with in TV and film. There's no shortage of, of work that has been set in Los Angeles, but you get to see it in a brand new way. You see places that you've never seen before. You see Los Angeles through the eyes of people who are discovering Los Angeles. And just very finally, my final question before I go, I mean, I'm already hoping we get more sugar in the future, but we do know, obviously, there is a second series of The Sandman. I was really lucky enough to be on set during the first season. It was so incredible to see what they put together. I just wondered how it is shooting a kind of second season, having that knowledge of the world and the tonality, and of course, vitally, having such a big positive audience reaction kind of behind you. Well, what's beautiful about entering a show for a second season is that you are so much more familiar with the cast with the crew with what the story is and it feels like you're re-entering it feels like family it feels like a homecoming and I will say that this year in particular going back to the Sandman felt very much like that not just because I was going back to a space that I knew and I understood but the fact that we are exploring family dynamics and and uh, you know the show is essentially about a, a family of obviously you know ethereal 
concepts, but we are a family and that was really lovely. I think continuing on a project, you get to learn so much more and you get to uncover more and, and bring more to the audiences. Hopefully there'll be more sugar as well in the future. But thank you so much for your time today, Kobe. Best of luck with the release of the show. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, hey you guys. <laughs> hey you guys. <laughs> hey, that's what they all say. Hey you guys. Hey you guys.